because most people do not understand that Satan's mightiest kingdom operating in this world is from the marine realm and that's why God originally says have dominion over every fish in the sea listen to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 it says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth the earth was without form and void and watch it darkness was where on the face of the waters the face of the deep in the Bible darkness represents the devil it represents spirits the Bible says the earth was without form and void why when Satan and one-third of the fallen angels fell from heaven they wrecked havoc on the earth and the Bible says they made their dwelling place on the face of the deep that's where darkness dwell that's the marine kingdom so it's obvious that one major part of Satan's kingdom is in the water marine kingdom and in Satan's marine kingdom there are untold multitude of demons legions and legions listen I want scripture to speak for itself my opinion has no value let's read this account from Luke chapter 8 verse 32 and 33 it says on the hillside nearby there was a large herd of pigs and the demons pled with Jesus let us enter into the pigs if you don't remember this is the account of the demoniac that had a legion of demons all right when Jesus confronted the legion and was casting them out the legion begged Jesus please send us into the pigs now listen to how the story unfolds so Jesus ordered the mob of demons to come out of the man and enter the pigs watch what happened next the crazed herd of swine stampeded over the cliff into the lake and all of them drowned who drowned the the, the, the pigs who are in the pigs the demons why did the demons want to go into the pigs because the pigs could not handle the legion therefore the legions let them into the water where they went back into their marine kingdom listen there are cliffs all over the world that at the bottom of the cliff there is land there is earth but this cliff had water below the demons led the pigs off the cliff killed them and they went back into the marine kingdom question why do demons prefer to live in people rather than animals demons will live in animals mind you if they have to but why would they prefer to live in people rather than animal listen please the human body your body my body is made up of 70 percent water they are very comfortable in water marine spirits are very comfortable in water and that's why they have no problem occupying human beings because 70 percent of our body is water question number two why did the demons drive the pigs into the water answer there was a lake below they returned to where they came from are you with me so far do you understand why demons can be quite comfortable in a body because of the water but if you don't believe me let me give you another scripture that Jesus said to prove to you why demons water demons marine demons love human bodies 
Listen to Luke chapter 11 and verse 24. When a demon is cast out of a person, it goes to wander into the waterless realms, searching for rest, but finding none. Why? Because there's no water. But finding no place to rest, it says, I will go back to the body that I left. Why? Because the body is 70% water and demons are very, very comfortable. Marine demons are very comfortable in the bodies of human beings. Satan and his demons have a habit of cloning themselves, not clowning, but cloning themselves from everything that God created. You need to get this into your spirit. If not, you will walk out of here thinking what I am teaching you is baloney and, and this is just nonsense. Because a lot of people on my YouTube channel commence and say, what, what, what kind of nonsense is this pastor talking about? Where can you find this in the Bible? Well, listen to how it happens. Demons clone everything that God has made. Number one, God created the octopus in the water. Do we deny in real time, literal world, do we deny that there are octopus in the ocean? No. No. Some people eat it every day, and there's nothing wrong with eating an octopus. It's all out there, and it's a creature that God made, and there's nothing wrong with it. However, demons claw, claw, uh, they, they, give me the word again, they clone the octopus. In other words, demons are spirits. Do you understand that? But they can put themselves or make themselves into the form of anything they want to. Some people don't believe that there are demons of octopus. Well, you know what? I don't blame them. You know why? If we didn't personally had an encounter in this church with the spirit of octopus, I probably would not have believed either. But we had the encounter in this church. And, and demons clone God's creation. But if you don't believe me, look at example number two. God made our parents, grandparents, siblings, and relatives. And they are a blessing. If you agree, say amen. But demons clone our family members after they die. And many times appear to us in the form of our deceased loved one. But it is not our loved one. They are demons. So demons have the ability to clone whatever God creates. Now if you understand this concept, you accept it and believe it, then the rest will all make sense to you. Let's look at a few biblical names of marine spirits. In Psalms 104 and 26 and Job, Job 41 and 1, the Bible speaks about Leviathan. In 1 Samuel 5, 52 and 1 Chronicles 10, 10, the Bible talks about the mermaid spirit, which is Dagon. Dagon was the Philistines' god. And their image for their god was half human and half fish. That's the mermaid. Then the book of Revelation chapter 13 and verse 1 calls another spirit from the water, the water beast. Now, Dagon, let me just mention this because it's very important. Dagon, the mermaid spirit, was responsible for the fall of King Solomon and Samson. Do you remember Samson fell into Delilah's trap? Do you remember Samson married a thousand wives and at the end of his life forsook God, was unfaithful to God? Well, let me tell you something, and these references can be found in Judges chapter 14, verse 2 and 3, and 1 Kings 11, 1 and 2. Solomon married a Philistine wife. Do you know 
that the God of the Philistines was Dagon? Do you know that the Philistines live near the water? Meaning, they had marine spirits as their God. And when Solomon went and married the Philistine wife, the Pharaoh of daughter, these marine spirits entered him. And he started worshiping the God of Dagon and fell into the trap of Satan. Samson, when Samson was born, God told him and gave him a set of rules that he must keep. And Samson broke all of them. Samson went down to the Philistine camp. The Philistines' God was Dagon, the mermaid spirit from the marine kingdom. Samson went down to the Philistines' camp, saw a Philistine woman, went back to his dad and said, get me that woman for my wife. What happened when Samson married the Philistine woman? The spirit of mermaid, the God called Dagon, entered him, made him submit to the marine spirits, and he died prematurely. Other names for marine spirits. In Job chapter 26 and verse 5, it tells us that there are many more spirits in the water. Listen to what it says. It says, the dead tremble. Those who live beneath the waters. Did you hear that? Those who live beneath the waters. Scripture make it, make it clear. There are living entities beneath the waters. Listen to Psalm 74, verse 13 through 15. It says, You divided the sea by your strength. You broke the heads of the sea serpents with an S, meaning plural. Not one. The sea serpents. So again, the scripture makes it clear, even though it doesn't mention all the name, it makes it clear that there are tons and tons of marine spirits living in the water. Are you with me so far? Here are some other names of marine spirits that live in the marine kingdom. And in case you're wondering where these names came from, well, let me tell you something. Even though the Bible doesn't mention certain names, when men of God are delivering people from demons, certain demons talk through them, and the revelation is given of the name of certain demons. And so listen, in the marine kingdom, you have the queen of the coast. That's one of the rulers of the ocean. You have the queen of the Indian Ocean. That's another ruler of the ocean. And then you have Asmodeus. Asmodeus is a marine spirit that is the prince of lust. And then you have Incubus, which charms women with sex in dreams to orgasm, lust, and masturbation. And then you have succubus, which charms men with sex in dreams to orgasm and also lust and masturbation. And then you have a marine spirit called celibate. You all know what the, 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 the meaning of celibate is? Singleness. Listen carefully. I'm talking to you straight talk from God's word. This celebrate, this celibate spirit stops marriages. It creates divorce, barrenness, miscarriages, abortion. Then you have the marine Jezebel. The marine Jezebel is an extremely sexual perverted spirit from the marine kingdom 
It is responsible for homosexuality, lesbianism, incest, rape, polygamy, fornication, adultery, pedophilia, molestation, pornography. That's why you find whenever people live by the ocean, on the coastline of the ocean, those cities and towns and districts are very perverted. People are living promiscuous lives. All kinds of sexual perversions. Why? Because it's close to the marine kingdom. And they dominate places like that. And then you have marine witchcraft. Marine witchcraft is responsible for mental disorder, learning disability, autism, bankruptcy, loss of promotion, and loss of job. You know, thankfully, maybe we don't see this happening a lot here, even though it does. There are untold people that I pray with every day that faces these exact same things. They, they do not realize, some do and some do not realize that these spirits are from the marine kingdom that are working. And then you have the marine Rahab spirit. We have heard about Jericho and when the Israelites went to Jericho, they found Rahab, the prostitute, living on the wall. Well, the Bible in the book of Isaiah, chapter 51 and verse 9, speaks about the marine spirit called Rahab, which is also responsible for prostitution. And then you have Python, which I did a separate teaching on. You have the spirit of octopus, which I did a separate teaching on. You have the spirit of jellyfish, which I mentioned when I was teaching on the spirit of octopus. So all these spirits, wh whether we acknowledge them or not, they are real, very real. And it is to our damage when we disbelieve because then they have more control than they ever should have. Now, very, very important. How do marine spirits gain entrance into a person's life? First